Tupac is one of the greatest rappers of all time, and he's also one of the most mysterious. It's been almost 30 years since his death, but there's a reason people are still talking about what really went down. Last year of his life was full of music, violence, and conspiracy theories. And today, we're breaking it all down to see what the last 12 months of his life was really like. Let's get right into it. Tupac was killed in September 1996, but a year earlier, he was serving time in the Clinton Correctional Facility in New York. He had been convicted on two charges of first-degree sexual abuse after he assaulted a woman named Ayanna Jackson with his crew in a hotel room. Pac denied being involved with the assault, but he apologized to Jackson and said, I'm not apologizing for a crime. I hope in time, he'll come forth and tell the truth. While he was locked up, Pac spent his time reading heavy books like The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli and The Art of War by Sun Tzu. But he couldn't just sit around and read all the time. His pockets were already low when he got locked up, and every day, he was losing more and more money. Pac got his girlfriend, Keisha Morris, to take care of the business side of things. And they ended up getting married while he was locked up to make everything easier. At the time, Death Row Records was already taking over the industry with Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg dropping classic albums. So Pac had Keisha help him set a meeting up with Suge Knight. Most rap fans don't know that Pac and Suge actually had history before he signed with Death Row. Back in 93, Pac was in a movie called The Butter Rim, and the soundtrack was produced by Death Row. Suge paid him 200k to record one track for the movie, so Pac knew he had to cash the backup. Suge flew out to meet with Tupac in prison, and that's when the war between the East Coast and West Coast really started. Right after they linked up, Suge got on stage at the Source Awards and called out Diddy. His bad boy record crew was the face of the East Coast, and Suge sparked a beef that left Biggie and Pac both dead. According to rumors, Pac knew that signing with Suge was dangerous, but he didn't have a lot of options. His mother was about to lose her house, he was facing years in prison, and by that point, he was desperate. He allegedly even told her friend, I know I'm selling my soul to the devil. Tupac got out on an appeal bail thanks to Suge and Death Row in October 1995. But instead of taking some time off to enjoy his freedom, Pac started working like he knew the end was coming. He touched down in California and got right in the booth at Death Row Studio. According to people in the studio with him, Pac came in and laid down his legendary first verse on ambitions as a writer within an hour. For the next few weeks, all Pac did was show up at the studio at 6 or 7 in the morning and work until everyone else was literally falling asleep. Pac was also making movies at the time. Young Noble from his Outlaws crew said they would go to the film set at 6 in the morning, leave at 5 in the afternoon to go to the studio, and stay there and record until 3 or 4 in the morning. Snoop Dogg told Vlad TV that Pac he worked like a fucking racehorse, like. Some rappers take a week to lay down one track, but Pac would have three finished in an hour. Nobody knew why he was working so hard, but Snoop and others think that Pac knew he was gonna die. Before he went to prison, Pac survived getting shot five times in New York. He was at Quad Studios to record a feature for a rapper named Lil Sean. Then out of nowhere, he got rushed by three dudes in the lobby who robbed and shot him. The Notorious B.I.G. and Diddy were allegedly in the same studio the night Tupac got shot, and he started to believe they were involved with what went down. Biggie and Pac were tight with each other, and Biggie even used to crash at Pac's place when he was on the West Coast. Pac brought him out to perform with him, and they recorded a couple tracks together. But everything changed after that night in Quad Studio. Before Pac got shot, he was a socially conscious dude who wanted to stop the abuse that black people face in America. His family was full of Black Panthers and his early records were full of lines about social justice and empowerment. But after the shooting and time in prison, Pac came out going hard with the gangster rap in me. He linked up with Suge and went to war against the East Coast, and just a few months later, he was dead. In between making music, movies, and sending diss tracks at his ops, Pac also had time to start dating Kadada Jones and moved in with her. His marriage with Keisha Morris was officially over a week after he got out of prison, and he started dating Kadada even though he dissed her dad in the interview. Kadada's dad, Quincy Jones, is a legendary music producer, but Pac told Source Magazine that all he does is stick his d in white and make f up kids. Quincy's daughter, Rashida Jones, clapped back, and a few months later, Pac ran into her sister, Kidada, at a club. He started apologizing because he thought she was Rashida, but they hit it off and started dating. At first, the situation wasn't cool with Quincy, but then Pac and him squashed their beef, and it was all good. Some fans think Pac recorded so much music because he knew his death was coming. But another theory is that he just wanted to fulfill his contract with Death Row as fast as possible. At the time, Pac was mentoring Keisha Cole. She says that he wanted to leave Death Row and sign with Quincy Jones. He was already planning to marry Kadada. 
linking up with Quincy on the business side of things would have been huge for him. But before Pac could get away from the violence and drama at death row, he was shot and killed in Las Vegas. Pac, Kadada, Shug Knight, and the rest of their crew flew in to watch Pac's homie Mike Tyson fight in Vegas. After the fight, Pac and his crew jumped to Crip named Orlando Anderson in the lobby of the MGM. Security rushed in to break it up, but the cops didn't come through, so Pac and Shug went back to the Luxor Hotel. Pac talked to Kadada in their room, then left for Shug to go perform at a nightclub. After Pac was shot at Quad Studios, he started wearing a bulletproof vest almost all the time. But when Kadada was helping him pack for the trip to Vegas, he told her it would be too hot to wear it, so they left it at home. While Suge and Pac were driving down the strip, a white Cadillac pulled up next to him and started letting off shots. Pac got hit four times, and one bullet destroyed his right lung. He was rushed to the hospital for emergency treatment, but tragically died six days later. Tupac did more in his last 12 months than most people do their whole lives. Before he was killed, he also recorded his final album on the Death Row contract, which helped fuel the rumors that he didn't actually get taken out that night in Vegas. Before the shooting went down, Tupac had been rapping about his own death and even referenced a fake death on the track Ain't Hard to Find. He said, I heard a rumor I died, murdered in cold blood, dramatized. Pictures of me in my final stage. You know mama cried, but that was fiction. So Coward got the story twisted, like I no longer existed, mysteriously missing. Pac's last album was also released under the name Machiavelli, which was a reference to an Italian philosopher named Niccolo Machiavelli. Pac started reading Machiavelli's books in prison and became a huge fan. Machiavelli allegedly faked his own death, and some fans think Pac got the idea from him. Nobody was ever arrested for Pac's murder. There's a lot of rumors about what actually went down that night. A lot of people think Orlando Anderson came back and shot him over what went down at the MGM Grand. Others think Diddy set him up, and some say Suge Knight was actually the one who had Pac taken out. According to rumors, Suge knew that Pac wanted off the label. Suge ain't the kind of dude to let the most popular artist in the world just walk away, and some fans think he killed Pac instead of releasing him from the contract. Suge says Tupac isn't even dead, though. According to him, last time he saw Pac in the hospital, he was up laughing and joking around. And in 2014, he told TMZ, Tupac not dead, n if he was dead, they'd be resting on dudes for murder. Even some of his homies, like Treach, think he's still alive in Cuba. Treach and Pac work on the Five Deadly Venoms together. And in 2010, he told an interviewer, Last time I saw him, he was in trash. Nobody knows if Pac died that night in Vegas or not, but the last year of his life was one of the wildest times in rap history. And people will always have different opinions on how a lot of it went down. It all happened before social media, cell phones were everywhere. So it's hard to back most of the stories up with any concrete evidence. What we do know is that when Pac got out of jail, he was on a mission to take over the game and destroy anyone who got in his way. He recorded the first double album in rap history, acted in three movies, and finished another album all in just a few months. Maybe he really knew that the end was near and he couldn't waste time. Or maybe he just wanted to get away from Suge Knight as fast as possible. Nobody can say for sure, but at least he left behind a massive legacy and still keeping his name alive today. Rest in peace to Tupac.